Ed Parler's mockup generator. They have a bunch of different built-in um, kind of apps over here on the left-hand side. So I'm going to go to Instagram, and I think it sometimes just wants to pop up as being the app install. It's neat, but they also have a website, clicks one, video post, photo post. The photo post is by far the most common type of Instagram type of a post that you can create. So it's asking you to fill in all these different fields over here. For example, here the account name. Go ahead and enter name of your account, and that'll reflect itself over here. This logo is so small that rather than trying to put in one of their tiny logos, my suggestion was just to use an attached one that I provided in the folder. Just something very, very simple. And at least that gets rid of that, your logo here type of a thing. If you want to come on in, let's say we're going to recreate this post right here. I've already made a screenshot of this. I'm going to copy the original text that they had. Come in here and just say browse for the picture. And here's the screen grab I've gotten for that one. And it'll update itself. The call to action, let's just leave it as learn more. Likes, sounds great. It's not worth changing the message. I'm just going to paste it in here. You could type it in here from scratch. And I'm going to go ahead and add a hashtag. This thing over here is keeping running track. It's saying that for the most part, you should probably keep your messages to be 90 characters or shorter. Or it doesn't have a way to be able to reflect that. Sometimes things that are 300 characters and longer work really well too. The worst thing is using a 91 to 299 character post. For some reason, those medium length posts that only fill up about two full lines or two and a half full lines seem to get ignored more than any other thing. And if I like this, fantastic. Um, come back on in here and just decide that you're going to do a screen grab on a Mac. Command Shift 4. Take a screenshot of that and you're done with that one. Other ones that you can end up doing, you could do an Instagram story, fake for Facebook. Again, it could be set up for website clicks. This would be as if you'd found that TripAdvisor had written an article saying top 10 places to go in Wilmington, or maybe it even had Bespoke is the best coffee in Wilmington. You could go ahead and paste that headline in there. But again, the one that most people end up using is the photo post. Set up the exact same way for you to be able to come on up here and insert the logo to replace this. The name of your page. Whatever type of message that you're going to write in there. Paste in the image. Do keep in mind that the image shape for the Instagram one is recommending you a size that was a perfect square. That seems to work best on Instagram. On Facebook, they found over the years that a slightly wider proportion so in this case, you're saying 1,200 by 628. A wide picture tends to work better than a square or a tall picture. And if you felt like it, you could insert some of these other things down in here. You could um, go ahead and write down page comments if you wanted to insert some of that. But again, if you're pretty much set once you've uploaded the picture and put in your text here. Another thing that you can end up doing that a lot of students were using was the event thing. So on here, Let's say that you found that this particular person was going to do like a pop-up, like learn how to make a charcuterie plate or learn what goes on a charcuterie plate or what some of the common terms were. So I'm going to go ahead and say that Bespoke is going to sponsor one of those type of things. So the page name is still Bespoke. Popping in the logo for Bespoke for just the simple coffee icon. And then I'm going to come back over in here, and I'm going to just find that Chef Anne. There, this is a great paragraph. Come back on in here. The message happens to be that. And I know that it's screaming at me that we're a little bit long, but again, this thing has no way to be able to track, keep it under a certain length or over a certain length. It's just kind of one way or the other. The event owner, let's just say, is Chef Anne's
Don't have a spoil charcuterie, so we'll go back here. And it changes that up to there. You can come on in. In terms of popping in the image, let's say took one from actually her website. And then the event name is um, Shakuri. Um, event location, I believe their address is second and princess. You could even come back in and set up what a time would end up being on this. It's going to start at 7.30 p.m. Just 7 p.m. And then at that point, we again, we've got our logo in here. We've got that it's from Bespoke. We've got the topic of the event, this thing. You can change the date on here to be whatever date that you wanted it to end up being. And once again, when you're done, go ahead and make a screen grab of this thing and it's already built up in that mock-up. So this is a pretty clever tool. It can create a lot of different formats for Instagram, different types of Facebook posts, Twitter and Pinterest. Yes, a few people tried to use Canva to be able to make these and that's fantastic. Canva is a great program. Only problem is it has no way to represent the font size or anything like that of any of the social media posts. So when it was, when people used those, they ended up having type that was so small you couldn't read it no matter how much you zoomed in on it. So it's a great thing to do if you wanted to mess around and create some kind of text or graphics on top of the picture. But in terms of putting the entire thing together and being able to represent these different uh, you know, exact formats that Facebook or Instagram uses, it's terrible for that. So again, add parlors, mock-up generation, pretty neat tool.